What's up guys, welcome back to Diving Garage. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do front and rear brakes on a fifth gen Camaro. Let's dive in. Uh, real quick, one thing I wanna talk about with lifting these cars is that if you try to get your jack and find the pinch weld, what's gonna happen is that your little cap here is gonna start to be cocked out like this. And I don't know, it seems a little sketchy to me. So what you can do is get you one of these pucks. Um, it goes right there on the pad of your jack and it has these two little, I'm gonna get you a little closer. And it has these two little uh, lips, so that way it kind of locates the pinch weld. And what you'll notice too is one of these is shorter than the other. Uh, that's because there's a little bit of interference. So if you just trim this a little bit, it'll fit right in there. So all you gotta do is get this guy and then find the pinch weld here. And you're gonna have the longer um, arm here, I guess, uh, outboard. So it's gonna go in there just like that. You kind of feel it. There you go. If, if you need to, just get down there and check it out. Then you can roll your jack under. And it has, oh, I forgot to mention too, it has a little magnet so it can stay. So then you can get your jack right where it needs to be. There you go. And it's a lot better. Otherwise, you kind of risk uh, something slipping, and the last thing you want to do when you're trying to fix or just do a mod to your car is to break it, right? I know we've all been there. All right, so we got the car in the air. Let's go over what this is gonna take real quick. It's pretty easy. We're gonna drive out these two pins. There's a hold down bracket we're gonna remove, slide the pads out, and then also what we're gonna be doing is we upgraded to braided stainless steel lines. Uh, I've never been super impressed with the way these brakes have felt. Uh, to me, they're Brembo, so they should feel a little bit better. But to be honest, also, that's probably because the fluid is black as night. So we're gonna get all that taken care of. Let's do it. All right, now at this point, if, you're, if your pads don't just come out, that's okay, don't freak out. So these, um, these circles right here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a flathead and you're gonna put the tip on the edge of the rotor and then use this circle as leverage. So you just tip it, put it right there, grab the edge of the rotor and you push back. Now normally at this point, I would tell you to connect some hoses right here, crack these bleeders so you can get this old fluid out. But we're gonna be doing a complete flush, so that's not really an issue here. So let me show you from this side. So we're gonna get our screwdriver, put it right here, and then put the end on this circle, and just use that as the leverage point, and retract that pad, just like that. So now you can see, I got the tip of the screwdriver in there. I'm gonna use this pad right here. I'm just gonna lever that back. Oop. There we go, there we go. All you need to do is just enough so you can get your pad out. Because then what you're gonna be doing later, is you're gonna be retracting uh, the actual pistons. But before we do that, I'm gonna go open the reservoir and see if it's super full or if it's already overflowing and take a little bit out if we have to. All right, so now that we've got those pads out, we're gonna depress these pistons. If you can see me here, this little shiny spot. And I already checked the reservoir. There's plenty of room, so we're just gonna push them down a bit. Then we're gonna push that fluid all the way back up through the system. And like I said, normally I would not recommend this, but uh, we're going to be doing a complete flush because it's all good. All right, so that's good there. And then do the other side, same process. Just gently push them on back. There you go, just like that. All right, so then you can get your new pads out. For this job here, we're going to be going with the Bosch. And I forget what kind these are. I think these are a ceramic and it's pretty easy I, I like Bosch that's that's my flavor of choice I know these are Brembo but I like the way that they come packaged kind of protected and they come with they come with the new hold down and they come with some grease they kind of come with everything you need so what I'm gonna do let me open up this grease right quick 
we're gonna do now is we're gonna get some pad well first let's make sure the pad fits before we go putting grease on these things yep all in there yep perfect that'll fit right in there and then we're gonna get some grease and just put it right on here you don't need to go crazy just a good bit is fine i'm just gonna do one line across and kind of spread it out just like this right here and then we're also going to grease the pins i know one pin took a ride way over there but we'll, <laughs> we'll find it and we'll grease it up so then just like this right in there just like that bam and then it's going to live right apart right about there let me get the other one I'll grease it up off camera since you just saw that one. I'm just gonna slide that guy right in there. Oh, I just want to get hitting that piston a little bit. No big deal. Just press it down a bit more. Sorry, I keep bumping the camera. I got you guys right in there because what I've noticed is that a lot of these videos they never really show you. They just talk about it. But I wanted to get get you right up in there because I know that's the most helpful being able to actually see what's going on not just a dude narrating while he does it there we go just like that there we go nice snug fit right there right there all right and then what we're going to do is we're going to drive in our bottom pin And we're gonna get this guy, and he goes face down like this. We're gonna drive in the bottom fin first, place this, and we'll bend it forward to get the top end. All right, and this thing goes like this. You're gonna hook the pin right here on the bottom, and you're gonna bend it forward. So, hook the pin, we're gonna bend it forward. I'll get the other pin started, and that'll keep it down. bam and it's that easy guys so why didn't we do the rotors because rotors are fine i typically don't replace rotors every single time unless they're obviously damaged warped or some other reason but these rotors are perfectly good they got plenty of life on them left so we're gonna run these suckers you know why too because these things are freaking expensive and this will do the job just fine all right one thing i'm gonna do real quick too is just crack these bleeders just make sure we're good i don't want to run any problems later like using a socket not a wrench <laughs> you don't slip there we go boom okay we're just gonna put those just snug for now we'll get back to that all right now we're gonna address the um, what is it the brake hose so this car is a little weird this nut right here is a 7 16 it fits perfect why don't know why but we're gonna crack this get this loose and then we're gonna come get this hole down off and we'll make our way up here to get the actual junction off. Reunion, I think is the right word. There we go. All right, then we're just gonna let that drain right onto the ground. There we go, that, I'm not gonna be using that. That done. And this nut back here, this is a 10. So again, not sure what's up with that. It's okay though. All right, so that banjo bolt we just dropped on the ground, we're not going to reuse. But this bolt right here is safe. We're going to reuse this. All right, now we can make our way. Let's make sure you can see. Make our way up here. Right there to that union. Good. And obviously, I didn't mention it, but the wheels are turned a little bit to the side just for your viewing ability. You don't necessarily need to do that, but I thought it'd be helpful so you guys can see. So... There's a little clip here. Ooh. There's a little clip here we're gonna take off and then we're gonna put uh, a wrench on each side of these and then we're going to get that sucker out of there. Pretty easy. So I'm gonna try and just turn it. If it wants to come off, that'd be nice too. There we go, gone forever. Nah, just kidding, I found it. All right, and these ones are a little bit odd. The top is a 13 and then the bottom is a 9 16. Again, not sure what's up with that. So there's 9 16 here. Then you go to the bottom just like that. Grab our 13. We're gonna crack this line loose. 
good this isn't an old rusty crusty truck or something so it comes right out no big deal there we go i'm just gonna kind of get that out of the way because our next step a little messy all right all done so we got the new oh where to go where to go there it is this is the new braided stainless steel line we're gonna be putting in and i want to reuse that hole but doesn't fit that's okay this is uh, 5 8 so what we're going to do is just going to get a unibit and just widen this up just a little bit. It doesn't take a lot. So we're just going to kind of bend this out of the way for now. Get, get out of there. Come on. Get out of the way. There we go. Oh, don't want to be shooting trap and open this brake system. And where's my drill? Here it is. That's what I got to do. Get your unibit and drill. And go. Get on in there. Only I could do this. Here we go. Right, that should do it right there. Let's double check. Bam, just like that. That's perfect. So then we can hold a wrench on this side here. It goes through the existing bracket, which is nice and secure. And there's another hole down that goes into this little channel right there that locks it all into place. Pretty easy. And then we're going to hold this with an 11 sixteenths and we're going to get our 13 again tighten her on down and what I, what I found with flanged units like this is that tighten it down loosen it back up and tighten it down again when I was doing the brakes on my uh, my truck my 1979 K10 I got a new uh, stainless steel lines I forget from who but they were, they were fine they worked out great but what happened was I tightened everything down once and then never kind of went back and I was getting leaks everywhere. So what I did was I loosened everything and then tightened it all back up again. Perfect. Why? Don't really have an answer, but that's what happened. So we're going to get this tight. We're going to loosen it a bit. And we're going to tighten it again. Is that real? I have no clue, but <laughs> that's what works for me. So then we got a little clip you do here. I'm just going to shove that up in there like this, and I'm going to beat it in place. If I can, Let's see if I can beat it with my left hand while it's in there. Hold it. Oh, hold on. This might take a second. Oh my gosh. Bam, just like that. Can you see? Sort of. Where was I? Right here? Yeah, you can kind of see. I can get you in there like this. All right, can you see now? So all I did was I got that little bracket on here, just tapped it in place. So now this is just like the factory setup. We got the union, same bracket, hold down. Now let's continue on and get it reconnected. All right, so now we're gonna get our brake line. We're gonna put it in here and kind of see how this is gonna work. We're gonna want it just like this. So that's gonna work perfect. So we just get our little uh, support bracket in, then we'll get that banjo bolt in. All right, there's that one, pretty easy. And then your kit is gonna come with two banjo bolts. They're gonna be shorter because this fitting is a little bit thinner than the factory one. And you're gonna come with, uh, what, four copper washers? You only need two. And we, we bust this open and show you what we're actually gonna be using here. So you can see there's obviously two, and if you can tell, this one has a coarse thread, this one has a fine thread. Use the fine thread ones. We don't need this one, and we're only gonna need two of these washers. And one's gonna go on the top here like this, and then we're gonna feed it through the banjo bolt, and one goes on the bottom. Perfect. And just jam it on in there. This is a 14. I'm just going to use that to finish it up. We're going to make sure the fitting is straight. I'll show you once it's all nice and tight. There we go. All right, so that is it for the front. Uh, pretty easy. We got the brake pads replaced. We greased everything. The, I did grease the slide pins. I don't remember if I showed you that or not. We greased the back of the pads. We got a new hold down bracket and a new braidless, braided stainless steel line. And it's red and it's freaking cool. Red means it's fast. This is good for like two horsepower per side. Two sides, it's four horsepower. So we're adding it up. 
and obviously the other side is the exact same as this one uh, we're not going to worry about bleeding it right now uh, we're going to move on to the back all right so in the back the setup is pretty similar you got two pins a holder downer bracket and then we're going to swap out this line and then i'll probably soak this whole place with degreaser because it's pretty filthy and behind this rotor is actually the parking brake i got the stuff for it but let's see how it looks and if it's bad we'll swap it if it's pretty good i'm gonna leave it all right let's do it all right now this side is a little tougher to record but i'll try to get you as close as i can same deal like i said i'm gonna knock these pins out there we go all right got those got those and on this back section we're gonna do the same deal as as before we're gonna get these uh we're going to use the rotor and this little section here to sort of leverage these down. So if you can see right there, I've got my screwdriver pinned on the rotor. I'm going to press on the pad and I'll depress that piston. There we go. Just like that. And just like that. So now I should be able to slide these out. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, it's generally just pretty disgusting down here. I don't know if it's all the burnouts or what, but... This back section is way, way dirtier than the front. Yeah, look at that. Man, it's crazy. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this brake hose off and then I'm actually gonna take the caliper off. Cause like I said, we're gonna check the uh, parking brake. I think it's fine, but let's find out. So first I'll get this uh, brake hose off. And again, for some reason, this is a 7 16 Fine, stay in there. And then up here, there is a bolt that's a hold down for the brake hose. Yeah, jam that off real quick. Save that. Oh, and that was a 10 for whatever reason. And then on this side, we don't get as lucky with this section or this setup here. So um, while it's pinned down, I'm going to go ahead and loosen this. And then I'm going to take this. Um, Take this whole little bracket off. It's not a problem. There's just one little bolt right there. See if you can see that. Can you see what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's way back there. Hey, this little bracket right here. Pretty easy. Being attacked by flies right now for whatever reason. Get out of here. It's like I'm in Australia. Sheesh. Right. Oh yeah. Ten. So grab a extension and zip that off of there. I'm gonna take this whole brake hose and we'll go to the bench, get this off, and then open this up. <laughs> and then this little tab just goes into a slotted hole there. Now, I got our new one. Sort of get it in place. That. There it goes, nice and easy. And then we'll get our other hold down tab and smash that in there. No problem. And then one more time with the uh, 11 16ths on bottom. And the 13 on top. Why is it that way? No clue. There we go. And then like before, we're going to tighten it up, loosen it up, tighten it again. Is that real? I have no clue, but it doesn't hurt anything. Got a little tab, same as last time. Smash it up there. Just get that in place. Alright, and I need to correct myself from a little bit earlier. I was looking at this kit and um, noticed that the thread is not different. It's actually four of the same banjo bolts. So that was my bad. I'm sure I already got roasted in the comments, so, so it's okay. It's all good. This thing, just if I can look in here real quick, is going to end up 
like so. So same thing, banjo bolt, one washer, put it down on the bottom, another washer. Make sure you don't double washer. Make sure, it's, oh. <laughs> Make sure you don't double stack the washer. Sometimes the washers like to hang out on either the fitting or something else. And you don't want that. You want it to be the way you want it to be. With a single washer on each side. How about that? Let's say that. I'm going to flip this. There we go. Two more horsepower. What up? Cool. So now that we got that connected, uh, before we go ahead and put the new pads in, let's yank this caliper and then let's check out the brake pads or parking brake pads. And to do that, it's pretty easy. You get yourself a breaker bar with a number 18 on it. Should fit in here just fine. around there tight let's go there we go Woo. super tight down there one more down at the bottom we can do it we can do it there we go Woo. Yeah, those are on there like they've been on there for like 12 years. After that, we have the dreaded Torx bit. So this is a T30. It should, should come right off. Let's see. Yep, we're good, guys. We got it. Okay, and before you go trying to rip this rotor, make sure your parking brake is actually off. <laughs> and then let's see if it just come off or need some encouragement. Sorry, no problem. Let's give it a little bit of encouragement. Right there. And how's it look? Oh yeah, that looks good to me. That looks really good. Now, just for reference, this is a new parking shoe. And to just put that next to it there, let me see if I can get you down here. Oh, not really. But maybe you can see up here. This has plenty of life on it. This one is, it is thicker noticeably, but it's really, really not that bad. So if you do really want a video on how to do this brake shoes are really not that hard guys but i'm gonna leave these but if you really want a video on it comment below and if i get enough people saying we want to know how to do this i will i will do it i will do it for you but i need you to comment below all right for now i'm gonna get the air gun blow all this out shoot it with some degreaser probably and then um we'll start putting everything back together Let's get the new stuff. Like I said, I'm gonna use using this Bosch kit. Why? I know these are Brembo brakes, but look with the Bosch kit, I, I really just like it. And every time I can get a Bosch anything, that's what I do. Not a sponsor, it's just this is just what I like. So it comes in a nice bracket there, and then we got some new pins. 
and it comes with the grease and then of course your pads nice and protected to me it just says a lot when a when a manufacturer is willing to go through all that just for that way their product to make it safely all right and then same deal i'm just going to throw throw some lube on the back of here and we'll lube, lube the pins and get these slid in These right in there. There we go. Thanks. Shouldn't have to jam them in there. If they're a little snug, that's okay, but they shouldn't have to be beating them in there. There we go. Should kind of slide in. Just like that. Ow! Oh, that hurts. <laughs> It's gonna be good. Woo! Yeah. That'll be fun. I'm gonna take the GoPro off the stand here so I can give you a quick quick tour of what the heck's going on. Alright, so this is the hold down, the pins, we got the new pads in place. And then on the back of here, the nut we took off for the to get the caliper off was this guy right here. There's another one down there. And we got our new braided stainless steel line in place. That's a little bracket. I think it turned out pretty good. Well, next up, you gotta bleed your brakes. So this is typically the hard part. Maybe you only have one person. All right, so next thing to do would be to bleed the brakes, right? But I got a couple other mods I'm lining up. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and replace this reservoir. And does it need to be replaced? No, is it bad? No, it's fine. Um, but what I'm gonna do is get all the fluid out of here. There are two screws on the side, I take those out. We're gonna take this whole plastic assembly, the white plastic assembly you see here, take that off. And I got a new one we're gonna pop in place. So let's do that real quick. Hopefully this will be a good spot for you guys. All right, I'm gonna drain this by using one of these uh, little hand pumps here, hand siphons. Just gonna see if I can. I can jam this down up in there. There we go. Jam that down at the bottom. You got your little hand pump here, and then hold everything tight because you don't want shoot me brake fluid everywhere. There we go. You see that? Yep. Now I know you can use a turkey baster, but honestly, I've never had good luck with one of those. I've tried a few different ones and either the bulb comes off or it doesn't hold the suction. It just kind of sucks. Ha, <laughs> you get it. But this, this does a little better. All right, I don't think I'm getting any more. That's probably the bottom. All right, so let's check it out. Look at that brake fluid I was running. And then remember, this is also your clutch fluid. Look at that. Oh man, it's so bad. Running this murky water. Oof, I'm glad we're gonna be flushing this whole thing. All right, cool. So now once you're done with that, what I would do is just grab the other end of the hose and just stick it in there. Cause you know, like I said, you wanna be dumping brake fluid everywhere. Grab this, just recycle it, you know? Look at this. Oh, geez. That's awful. That's so bad. If you don't know, it's supposed to be like a caramel color. And this is not, not that, it's like, three days old coffee color not cool okay um i should do it now let's try to unscrew this thing i'll put the cap on just because it tries to dump everywhere there's the other one all right now this should pop right off but before we pop it off you know we'll grab a big towel oh Hold on forever no oh, here we go all right, big towel, big towel, what do I got? I'm just gonna sort of jam this up under here. Little catch, whatever comes out. Hopefully. 
and it should yank right out. Yep, there we go. And then I'm dumping brake fluid everywhere. Oh man, <laughs> that's not what you want to happen, but at least we caught some of it with a towel. Oh geez. Well, I can't do anything about it now. All right, so on the bottom of here, there's this one connection. This leads your, uh, your clutch, and then there's a sensor down there. So let's get this clutch thing off, get that sensor off. I don't know if that's the right way, but that's the way I'm doing it. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to the side, getting the little legs, prying them up and out. Don't know if that's correct, but who cares? As long as it comes off. There we go. I'm going to save that. I feel like I'm going to need it. And let's see if it just, there we go. Disconnects. Disconnects. Perfect. All right. Let's get this thing out of here. All right. Now, this is the replacement. Make sure I get it. Yep. This is the replacement. Same deal. It's got the connector, but you'll notice this is the clutch feed and it has a cap. It's because what I'm going to be doing is doing a remote clutch reservoir. So it won't be sharing the same as a brake fluid. Uh, I, GM did this for a reason. I don't know if it was a good one, but whatever. So what I'm going to do now is get this mounted up and then we can bleed our brakes. And I'll probably do the remote clutch reservoir in a separate video because I need to figure out where the heck I'm going to mount that thing still. I've got some ideas, but I'm not quite sure yet. Let's get these brakes bled. Boom. That easy. Now let's get these sink screws back in. Should be nice and hard. So I can't see what in the world I'm doing. All right, so I spent about 20 minutes trying to find a, a bolt that I dropped. But it turns out the uh, master cylinder kit I got, or the res master cylinder reservoir kit, comes with new gaskets and two bolts. So we're good to go. All right, so now we're just about ready to bleed them. So let me show you my bleeding setup. First things first, we're gonna go to dot four fluid. And I got a whole gallon of that. I got the good stuff. And this is my DIY pressure bleeder. So obviously it's just a garden sprayer and I tapped in a gauge and this is the magic that makes it all happen. This connector goes right on your master cylinder, screws right on, little pipe sends the fluid down. So it's really easy. All you gotta do is get your fluid, fill this beast up and then connect this to the top of the uh, master cylinder reservoir and you're in business. It's super easy. It's way better than the one man version. Uh, I didn't do that on the Explorer we had because it was a four product. This is a GM, so I got the right cap, uh, the right fitting for it. Uh, if you're curious and you wanna make one of these yourself, this is a Mighty Vac. I think it says 803 right there. Focus, focus. Yeah. So it's that easy, guys. Um, let me show you how it works. All right, so you get your uh, fluid here. You just oh, spill it everywhere, I guess. We just fill this mug up. Or if you're just doing, whoa, 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 calm it down. If you're just doing a little bit, you don't need to fill it up, but I'm gonna fill it all the way up. If I can do this with one hand, let's see. Are these? No, yeah, I can just leave it there though. Yeah, that'll work. All right, let me give it the old sideways. There we go, a little better. I'm gonna fill this up about three quarters of the way. Cause like I said, we were doing a whole flush. Got a whole gallon here, so why not? Let's see where we at. Probably stop with that line. Close to, all right, right there is fine. Got a little bit left over. And then after that, you just get your top here. And you screw it down, nice and snug, and you pump her up. You turn around so you can see, watch this little gauge. Oh man, it's already coming out, it's already coming out. Wait, wait, no, I wasn't ready, I wasn't ready. Wait, 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 wait. Woo, okay, wow. Forgot this comes out really fast. <sighs> making messes, making messes. Okay, let's put it on the mesh cylinder first, and then we'll pump it up. Okay, got that connected on there, got this here. Make sure the top is tight. Now we can start pumping. All right, so once it's loose, come on. 
Don't you fight me now. There we go. So you don't need to put a ton of pressure in there. As you can see, or if you can see, it's already, I'm already moving fluid. So I think I might just put like five PSI. Not a lot. All right, uh, well, let's go ahead to 10. Right there, cool. So look, so that's good to go. It's not dumping fluid everywhere. You wanna double check, make sure nothing's just dumping out the bottom. Nothing, I mean, it's wet down there, but that's from the earlier mess earlier. That appears to be good. All right, cool, so now we can easily go bleed the rest of the system. And I'm gonna get the little bottle for that. All right, so now that we have that on there, I'm gonna go to our bleeder. I'm gonna go to the outside one first, hoping that the fluid will come in through the line, fill up that first um, chamber, and fill up the second chamber, and it'll push all that nasty fluid up and out. And I got an empty Gatorade bottle with uh, with the hose in there, and normally you would wanna have some fluid in here to stop it when you retract the brake pedal. It won't suck up air, but in this case, you don't need to. So I'm gonna try to get this where I can show you. Um, yeah, just you can wash the bottom of that and right there and we'll crack this and then since there's pressure in the system now we'll start getting up yep, getting some air coming out a bunch of bubbles and a bunch of nasty fluid is coming in here oh tell me you can see that tell me you can see that disgusting see it's getting all black now yeah <laughs> oh no that's awful that's so bad it's disgusting. About, there you go. That's a better view right there. All that black fluid was not there. This bottle was empty a second ago. All right, cool. It's obviously filling up. Let's tighten this up real quick. And go check the pressure on the uh, on the uh, pressure bleeder there. Uh, looks like we got about uh, four pounds in there. Pump it back up to ten. There. And we'll do this again. Just gonna get you on there like that. There we go, it's shooting out now. You see those bubbles and stuff coming through? Let's try this. There you go, see how it's kind of dripping out now? Yeah, it's looking starting to look pretty decent. But what you're looking for is no bubbles, all fluid. And it looks like that's what we got right now. So I'm gonna jam this closed. And we're gonna do the uh, inside one now. It should be good to go, but we'll see. And in case you're wondering, yes, this is the driver front. I'm doing this so I can easily show you. But right after this, we're gonna go to the normal process, which is the uh, farthest away from the master cylinder, the farthest, the longest line, which is the passenger side rear. I just wanna show you this, so how easy it is. Now, which way is the loosen? I'm forgetting. There we go. There we go. Can you see this? Oh, well that's good to know. All right, so let me tighten this back up and show you something. So look here, on that new line we just put in, it's all wet now, so that means we need to tighten that up. There we go. That should do it. Try and dry this off so we can check again if it's leaking. All right, I don't see anything. Now we can watch that. So if you can see up here, tighten it up. I don't see any new water or fluid. Cool. So let's get back to bleeding this second second chamber here. Put your hose on there. Crack her open. There we go. See that right here. See how we got pretty clear fluid coming through? That's what you want right there. That looks great. So you're done with this one. Tighten her up and it's good to go. All right, now we're gonna follow the regular process. We're gonna go to the farthest and work our way through. All right, y'all, I just got done, did a couple rounds. 
look at what came out of there. This is pretty nasty. The flu started getting really good towards the end. I think that's the only reason you can sort of see through it. But it's, wow, it's just awful. You don't want that in your brake system. You want some good, clean fluid. This is disgusting. Ooh, anyway, that's done. All right, so as you can see, I have quite a bit left over. So, and I pumped it up to 20 pounds or 20 PSI and uh, went through it a couple more times. Overall, this works perfect. It's great. And so when you do this, when you take it off, you might have a little mess. No big deal. Uh, and then just make sure the level is set to the right amount. And to, I guess, disengage the system, some of the nicer of these garden bottles have like a little blow off valve. This one doesn't, so you just gotta crack this slowly so you don't shoot fluid everywhere. And then you're done. All right guys, that's it. Not too bad, right? So if you had any questions about anything, let me know in the comments below. If you wanna know more about this pressure bleeder that I made, let me know in the comments, I'll do a video on it. But otherwise, if you liked the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, get out there, dive in your next project. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.